greater the obstacle the more glory in overcoming it hello everyone a very good evening to all present here here i am looking this in rathore with immense pleasure and gratitude i would like to extend my warm welcome to all present here for that international webinar on overcoming challenges of education industry post covid 19 behalf of seems group so before proceeding with this webinar let me take a brief moment for the introduction of my organization seems welfare organization is a non profit entity established to work in the various areas of educational social welfare women empowerment skill development and entrepreneurship and livelihood generation etc seems group has conducted various international conferences seminars workshops and webinars in emerging technology in various parts of india and has an active network of 3 300 plus engineers managers researchers etc dg sachem is also an another initiative of seems groups and has also conducted more than 100 webinars 10 fdps and workshops and six international conferences so let's talk about today's webinar that is on overcoming challenges of education industry post covid 19 so how we can define a challenge something that needs great mental or physical efforts in order to be done successfully and therefore test a person's ability so to guide us all through this topic today we are having gargi dagar ma'am as our guest speaker gargi dagar ma'am have more than 3 years of experience in the field of mental health working with the daily stories stressors post covid issues and concerns marriage and family discord adolescence challenges confidence issues insomnia and decision making support in individuals she has she is associated with dab schools and air force stations rajokri as a counseling psychologist she has an vision to make therapy accessible by all irrespective of age gender identity social economic background of individuals to make the health mental health conversion as a dinner table conversation for households welcome and we are glad, glad to have you here good evening everyone a very special good evening to lokeenth for opening up this session for us thank you so much lokeenth for introducing me so uh, beautifully with the audience and connecting them with me as we all know that uh, we during the covid time no matter which age group you belong to we all spend a good amount of time learning things online before covid also things were online there were many courses people used to depend on um, uh, youtube learning they used to uh, join courses they used to attend lives they used to have a lot of resources online also but it was not a compulsion and this is something where the people or human species when something becomes a compulsion to be done so it just becomes really difficult for them uh, to bear up with that thing so when your education uh, is made compulsory to be done online instead of following the regular method which you have uh, seen uh, years after years in your journey of school education or college education so it completely became a blockage to the mind that how can i be doing it when i have never done that because now it has become a compulsion it's not a choice that you wish to learn things online or not but it's a compulsion now and human beings are not very good with compulsions we all know that um so for to make today's uh, session very interactive uh, and you people can ask as many questions as you have regarding this thing i am not bringing up any ppt for you i just want to make it a interactive one because it has been really long time two and a half year in this covid period and doing things online and then just just looking on the uh, video and uh, just looking on the ppt and then the speaker is explaining it to you and you are just listening to it and then we are good to go for the day so this is not the idea for today everyone look up to education in different manner everyone had different sort of challenges during covid we all were not in the same uh, journey uh, if we talk about our education and how it was impacted during covid and how exactly we suffered as an individual in this course of action if you wish to become an educator in next one or two year and you feel the students whom i will be going and teaching so how those uh, students would be looking up to the education when for last two years they were just playing maybe games online during the class or they were busy social media scrolling or they were doing something else rather than attending the lectures online so the education they which happened this way so how will you take over such students when you will be in the field of teaching in next one year or two year or 
if you were in the same uh, boat where you attended the classes but because they were online there was a lot of network buffering there was a lot of uh, video lagging behind and a lot of other challenges which you faced and you lost all your interest in learning and now you are standing on a position where you have your entrances where you have to submit your research paper and you are standing on a position where you just not able to figure out how i'm supposed to go ahead from here because during two years of online learning i was not able to learn properly and now i have to do a lot of things by myself so i'm just completely clueless so you can be in any situation you becoming educator for the students who were not actively participating uh, during the online course of learning or you were in that uh, area where you were you, you yourself were a student it is all on you to my audience i wish to know from my audience first that uh, what do you uh, think about uh, this thing um are you in which uh, group you are are you someone who is trying to save your grades uh, right now or you are someone um who would be educated in next coming uh, months or next coming years so what are, what are your challenges i want to talk about that first Ayushi. Hi Ayushi, how are you? Hello, hello, ma'am. I'm fine. How are you, ma'am? I'm also good. So Ayushi, I would like to know from you. So what are you currently doing in the field of education? Oh, uh, I'm pursuing my BBA, Bachelor's in Business Administration from LQ. Okay. Uh, so as far as I'm aware, uh, you must have completed at least one year or two during online learning. Oh, uh, actually, I did my diploma from LP itself too, and okay. I'm from the twenty two thousand eighteen batch, and okay. it is my third year of bachelor. Okay. I'm doing here this offline move. Yeah, ma'am. Okay. So, was there something which you learned online uh, during COVID period? Yes, ma'am. Many things like it's shifted online to uh just like. how to manage the things we uh, literally we know about the softwares and mm-hmm. the timetable many things ma'am it's like gotcha. something uh, which we can't actually we are not aware like offline mode you are you know, doing practically right implementation there yes. or online mode there is no interaction but uh, something you are learning how to like upload how to be like recorded you have to learn from there many things yes. and somehow the student will face difficulty too because it's not, yes. nothing like interaction right yes. so on that and something difficulty faced by student and somehow we just adjusted and learn many more things literally yes as uh, you have experienced uh, it yourself that how covid uh, impacted the practical learning or practical exposure so which is actually a very important factor because see we can learn a lot of things online it is not like that nothing can be learned online it's not it's not like that but feel like uh, mbbs feels like md feel like engineering where you act to actually need your tools in your hand and you need to do something in order to learn something those things cannot be done in an online mode no matter how much the teacher is putting the effort and how much the student is putting the effort that exposure is important so that way ayushi you have very nicely pointed that thing out so now my question to you is that way you feel that this particular thing was missing during covid period the practical exposure and learning so what is that one thing or let's say two things which you believe being a speaker i should point out or i should uh, give the solutions for um, that how we can improve wise any any particular for example if i start telling you that how you can improve wise if you couldn't learn things practically or you didn't get to practical exposure so if i talk about if i give a solution for that particular thing so is there anything else ayushi where you think being a speaker i should point out things that okay this is the problem that ayushi has raised and so i would like to give the solution to this problem so is there anything like that uh sir uh, ma'am uh, like particular point of view of mine confidence ma'am confidence confidence practical implementation because something student gain confidence you are sitting in drive giving your interview something you should gain because in like online mode also like being an i'm student of lpu i'm also nervous something nervousness are there okay so online also face to face i'm talking to you if i'll like on my video i cannot interact with you something nervousness will be there so this is also 
and in the offline mode something you on that spot of spot of time you will feel something nervousness so the main thing students mm-hmm. should be be confident mm-hmm. and uh, like uh, something like uh, implementation there will be so confidence yes. from my point of view confidence to be there and be mm-hmm. bold and mm-hmm. that's all it's my point of view ma'am that's yes. absolutely going in the right direction ayushi i am very yeah. proud of you that you summed it up so oh. well great I- So keep can interacting during the yeah yeah please go ahead I would like to hear you <laughs> yeah ma'am actually from my like I want to gain actually confidence like my weakness point is now while giving interviews or while sitting anywhere mm-hmm. now like after joining SEMS I literally mm-hmm. say I'm feeling proud while doing this uh, like uh, internship. I'll doing. I'll just gain more confidence. Before that, now, ma'am, I was like too nervous. I am not able to sit front of anybody, and I'm speak a bit also. This is why my weakness and seems to completely literally improve my confidence. Literally, yeah. and feel proud of that. So I Even want to gain. I am more. very proud of you that uh, you so smartly and in such a quick manner you just took up that opportunity when I asked you, "Are you here? Are you here?" You just said, "Yes, I am here," and you just grabbed the stage and you shared your opinions so well. First, you talked about how people are impacted because of COVID education, and then you shifted the whole idea that how you are impacted at the personal level and how you mm-hmm. wish to gain a lot uh-huh. of confidence. And then you even shared that you have started working towards that thing also. It's very beautiful. Go ahead, yeah. Ayushi. And um, second thing, ma'am, the most second very common thing in online mode, you are simply sitting position and you are doing the work. Even you also experience while sitting your own status position and you are doing the work. Something like physical movement is missing. Yes, physical yes. movement. Something is a very health conscious. Parents saying, "Just move, do exercise, and all stuff." But yes. something is like we have to sit, we have to study in this mode only, sitting, stiffness, everything. So yes. it's health impact also. And student need to be healthy, fresh minded, mm-hmm. while grabbing mm-hmm. more knowledge. While you're doing yes. study, you should be very healthy by your mind and by your body. It's very important for students. So Absolutely, two things. It's two things very impacted to the student life. Mm-hmm. So being a student, I feel these things. Actually, I'm mm-hmm. like suffering for my health issues. I'm doing something Ayurvedic also. So this mm-hmm. is literally impact in my life. Okay. And now I'm coming to hostel. I like coming to hostel. Settle everything like exercise, everything walking kilometers slowly, slowly setting it down. So I feel now okay. Something. Literally impacted very badly, but after coming help you, I think you know it's something improving little little bit. So great, two things great. I felt in this. Um, very nice, Ayushi. Very nice. Thank you so much for making such a great contribution of your knowledge in today's session. And okay, so now you, everyone knows. Okay, Ayushi. Okay, so now everyone knows the drill. That way, Ayushi shared her opinion. So this session would be a fruitful session for Ayushi. If I will uh, share my opinion that how Ayushi can make things better for herself, she is already doing it. She is already working for herself. That's very good. But not everyone has same level of understanding or same level of clarity. So this session is all about getting a clarity. The education industry has been impacted as a whole. For college-going student, for school-going student, the students who couldn't make it to school. Maybe the in the government setting, they couldn't uh, get the access to online classes. They they did not have uh, smartphones at their home where they can connect the classes. Or maybe someone is living in uh, such a remote area where they are not able to um, connect in the online mode, and the network is not there. The whole interest of the student has lost because there's no internet connectivity. So how much will you focus when the thing thing is not interesting enough to get focused upon? So. education industry as a whole has been impacted we all know that internet is all flooded with the content which talks about how this has been impacted let's try to gain our confidence back because being a student or being someone who would enter the industry soon to earn to become an educator to become an influencer so i do not want anyone to suffer with the confidence issue just because of for such a long period of time you are sitting on this side of the uh, camera or your smartphone and you just unmuted yourself to say yes ma'am no ma'am samajh aa gaya ma'am and you just muted yourself because this is not confidence you missed out on the entire uh, entire exposure that 
being a student you should be getting which is your right you completely missed out on that particular thing because of the covid so let's take this moment of this particular uh, webinar today and try to if you have confidence issue or if you believe you wish to face the audience or you wish to provide you in this uh, in session today so feel very free uh, to raise your hand i'll ask you to unmute to drop your uh, uh, thought in the chat box i'll read it out to everyone and try to take it as a challenge that i have to challenge myself and i have to take this particular call for myself that how i can come out of my comfort zone and talk about it coming to uh, what uh, yes uh so lokendra is saying the interaction in offline remove the mental stress also yes it completely removes uh the mental stress also when that happens in the offline mode and uh, we all know the reason for that when you are sitting uh, in front of your laptop so when you unmute yourself so maybe there is a background noise that will come so you feel a little reluctant to unmute yourself if and you know if you will tell if your teacher asks you to unmute yourself during a class and she says okay if you are unmuting yourself to speak something please put your video on on because now you have come to the highlight of the teacher okay this particular child is speaking something but you are sitting in a position where you are not comfortable enough to switch on your video that is another factor so again there is a mental stress how would i be uh, switching on my video i can't show people what kind of a house i have i can't uh, show them what i'm wearing i haven't taken bath and i'm in the class and all of other things are also there which makes people feel stressful about the household situation they are sitting and so they just avoid becoming interactive during the class because that will lead to switching on your camera and then just exposing uh, you to the uh, audience you are sitting with so that is another factor so i will just go uh, a little in detail about confidence uh, this is not only with the students college students and school students that that confidence has gone for our toss it has even happened with the people who are in their working uh, environment and uh, during covid they have become so comfortable talking to the screen so it becomes very weird for them when they come offline and they attend meetings that people are looking up on to them or i i in i so when people are looking um, up to you i in i so you just lost the whole track of what i was saying so that is another issue that has been raised by so many people that because of covid this particular challenge has came up along with that uh, if i come to second factor regarding what ayushi uh, pointed out that it is uh, becoming uh, difficult for people to maintain their health yes so i will take it as a physical health and mental health coming to physical health so what happened uh, uh, it becomes very um, uh, much you know it just send you a message when you are getting ready in the morning and you have to go to your offline office or offline class or somewhere offline so it just mentally prepares you the time you step out of your house by the time you reach your uh, office place so or the entire time you are mentally setting up yourself that okay i have to go i have to work i'll do this today i'll do that today this is a meeting that i need to attend a lot of other things to do a mental preparation for yourself but when you're sitting at home it becomes very difficult to shift yourself from one zone to another you walk up you didn't even bother to have your breakfast brush your teeth or take a bath and you just flipped your laptop and you started working so that way your mind is not getting any chance to shift from one direction to another so you walk up and in the in the same pace you are attending your office your college your classes your school classes and that is just not letting you shift the whole idea so that mental blockage is being created now so if someone ask me what is the top most problem with the uh, education industry today post covid so i tell people that is mental blockage because before covid you were expected to mingle with people and then come out with solutions you are you were assigned a assignment you have to do, do that assignment so maybe you will ask some senior of yours so maybe you will ask some classmate of yours so maybe you will ask your teacher 10 times what i'm supposed to do with this assignment and you try to do a lot of juggling with that assignment but when you are just sitting in front of the camera uh, over here and you know that i have 40 people in my class and if i send uh, if my teacher will be getting 40 assignments so will she be actually studying it even if your teacher will study all the 40 assignments but still this thought will trigger you that will she do that much of effort so your mind will say no 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 she will not do that much of efforts because 
your mind is telling you that you are you are uh, mentally blocked there's a mental blockage why you need to put that much of effort so maybe you'll just prefer cutting and copying and pasting things and you just upload it somewhere and you are good to go with it but you, this is this attitude you do not show to the offline class you are more aware about yourself in that manner that if i will submit this so there will be 39 other classmates of mine who will be witnessing this assignment and i do not want to be laughed upon i do not want others to make fun of me based on what kind of assignment it direct and a lot of other things also happen so education industry got the major impact because there is a mental blockage and no matter which age group you are in starting from pre nursery to nursery up to your phd your masters your graduation there is a mental blockage that do not allow you to come out of your comfort zone because that shifting of mind has completely been blocked entirely you are in that house environment your home environment that homely feeling so that homely feeling doesn't allow you to grow in the perspective of how my assignment should look like how my ppt should look like how i should be interacting with people on the online classes also then there is no certainty that for how long this thing is going to happen that way is it only 6 months one year two year when there is no certainty so i do not want to put a lot of efforts so i just feel okay this is about this particular semester only no so let it be i don't want to give my whole attention to this anyway i have to go to college from next semester on only covid is getting settled down next semester i will be in college will i be able to have this much of fun no no i will not be getting this much of chances to have fun so let me have fun in this semester i don't want to give a damn about what what is happening in the online classes i still have one year and two semesters to to save my grades then i'll put all the efforts but suddenly something happen your next uh, semester starts and again that is an online semester and then again you are uh, tossed okay now what i what i'm going to do so all of these things have created a trouble for people which has impacted their mental health in a very 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 strong manner there is no certainty that up to which point my education would take place in this particular manner so that uncertainty made you lose all your confidence that uncertainty played out with your mental stability and that thing has impacted you drastically at your mental level because you were not told by anyone that up to this mark you have to be in this online mode so that you can plan your things better and then when your mental uh, blockage is there and you are mentally not in you are not mentally feeling active so that will automatically make you physically inactive too and then when you are becoming obese or you are becoming overweight or maybe you are losing weight and you are just not having the right appetite for eating something you are not uh, having you are not feeling that energy in your body that you can hit a workout so all of those things are physically and mentally making you feel very very weak and that is not letting you uh, make the most out of this opportunity where you can just uh, um, regain all of your strength back and just face the situation as it is coming to you so now it is not you who is saving yourself you are not wearing your armors you have just dropped your armors and you you have just left the whole situation on the situation itself i'll see when it will come to so again i'll take a pause over here and i would like you people to add uh, certain things over here um and then i'll move forward so we have a comment here i think there is a positive side also which we can develop our self governance capability when there is no one who says do it and and uh, don't do that i am 100% agreeing to what mohammed uh, mohammed kati has written over here i hope that i am pronouncing your name right uh, he he has rightly quoted this thing and i was about to come on this point only that um, if you will meet people and if you will talk to them and when you inquire them what made you save all of your grades um even uh, during the covid and how how you managed to score so well even during online classes so people will very smoothly tell you uh, that when we used to go to offline classes it was us no who used to study to get this course so even in the online classes also it's us who study and get this course no whether it is offline class or it is online classes it is only you who has to take the whole responsibility of educating yourself because at the end of the day without self study you cannot score good marks so these things you will get to know from those people who maintain their grades both in offline and online world and who just kept on self regulating themselves based on the situation so now what education industry needs right now what is the need that we um, education industry need 
we as an individual who is going to be an educator somewhere who is uh, going to start their career after some time so this is our duty as an individual and this is the need of the hour as a as on our individual front as well as on the industries front that we understand that how are we going to sail through this period i completely want to ignore last two years the ignorance is going to be the principal to sail through last two years in coming back to the offline world that i'll completely ignore the two years existed and what all loss happened there i am completely going to ignore them and i am just going to take up people the way they were uh, studying uh, in 2020 before 20, april 2020 they were studying so do i want to take people as it is okay these two years didn't happen let's ignore them that way people used to study before 2020 up to march 2020 i will just think after march 2020 all of a sudden july 2022 came and i will start teaching them in the same pattern and i'm going to ignore that beach mein bhi kuch hua tha i completely ignore last two years or being a learner yourself you also want to do the same thing that i'll ignore the two years existed the way i used to study in march 2020 i will study in the same manner in july 2022 and i completely ignore something like that happened the loss of knowledge that happened you no know, how many online classes you tried attending but because of low network at your side or low network at your teacher side you couldn't make most out of that lesson or um, you tried to give 100% of your attention but because of your family cures your family is fighting at the background because not everyone has family healthy families uh, your family is uh, fighting at the back and just trying to concentrate in the class but you are unable to because you are not feeling good you lost your loved ones in uh, these waves of covid and you missed out on a lot of classes at that time and when you and when you uh, came back in those classes so you just could it uh, bring back all of your attention with you and you you were there physically but you were not there mentally so is it on you as a learner it is on you as an educator that do you wish to completely ignore that these two year exist it caused us to lo- lost a lot of things or do you actually want to take a com- complete authority on yourself being an educator being a learner that okay these two years impacted me in this way so that is your call so i would be sharing my personal example over here so that it becomes more clearer to you that how you can save yourself uh, so that those two years whatever loss they brought to you in terms of your education th- those loss doesn't make your career or make your education impacted in a manner where you are not uh, being that good at what you do the way you were before 2020 uh so when i when covid hit i was done with my masters i started with my job uh so during that time for the very first month i just thought i am uh, a kind of i read a lot so when the covid happened and we were at home so i just thought i'm saving on a lot of traveling time and things are very much comfortable okay if we have to stay at home it's okay we can just spend time with ourselves with our families it's not going to be there for a very long time so why not to make most out of it this was my thought process when i made delgona coffee like many of you must have made delgona coffee at that time because that's how we were you know making things happen for each one of us trying new things and everything uh, so for march ap- uh, for april may june it was very smooth i was into reading doing a lot of physical workout and just spending time with my family i started with my online practice at the time but uh, i just started a few months and why um, you know, things are not becoming stable uh, till when we are going to be in this uh, particular scenario only uh, and now i have read a lot now i have done a lot but now it's time to you know go out in the world and interact with them and understand whether your learning is going in the right direction or not even if i am learning i am gaining knowledge but for few days i kept on feeling whatever i am educating myself with is it going to be worth it after covid is gone these kind of questions i started asking myself because i don't know how the outer world is changing because covid is not leaving things in the same manner so is it even right whatever i am learning and even if i am spending time um, learning all of these things so post covid will all of these things be started coming in my mind and i started to become very anxious that why this is not ending why we are stuck in this thing only 
I don't know whether my uh, efforts are going in the right direction or not, and a lot of other things also. After that, okay, slowly and gradually, uh, towards the December, we start. started interacting with people offline also we had a lot of commute open so we can go out uh, we can interact with people there were job opportunities coming back and people were hiring again so in february i joined offline working so when i went um, to a school i i used to go to government school at that time being a counselor so during that time i realized in the month of february teachers are rushing the syllabus in schools so i am not quoting that this is this happened in government school and i am just saying something negative i am just sharing with you what was the need of the hour at that time that's what i am trying to share with you um in uh, february teachers are trying to rush the syllabus in school uh, so i witnessed this thing in school and i felt very sad had about it because i have always been a learner who would take learning as a journey rather than a destination i used to be a slow i used to take my learning in a very slow pace i have to enjoy my learning so i felt very bad at that time that how these students would be coping up with the syllabus which was supposed to be starting in april 2020 and supposed to end in march 2021 how would they be coping up because during covid our mental health has actually been impacted we have seen so much of things happening around us so these students are way too fragile uh, to you know eat up so many words eat up so many books uh, grasp so many knowledge in such a short a span of time teachers were also panicked how you know, we would make our students excel from this particular uh, session because when students ca- are coming back to school they have even forgotten what they learn in 8th and 9th class and now they are going to appear for boards in 10th how will it happen so even teachers were panicked students were panicked so, they- so all of these things happened and after that it became came uh, you know at that time it this thing clicked my mind very hard that why this particular thing is happening where um, you know individuals teachers are on a different race they have to make the students excel through this as students are on are on, on different race where they just want to make most out of you know coming back to school after 9 and 10 months and they were not even serious about it okay i have to give my votes they were only interested in meeting their friends because they are meeting after 9 or 10 months so they were all interested in coming to school every day they were they used to like okay ma'am sunday ko bhi bula lo hum aa jayenge because they wanted to meet their friends so this was the energy the students wanted to invest in to meeting friends enjoying their offline world and teachers were just completely concerned about how my child would be excelling through the class 10 because i want to i don't want my ch- children to sink in so these all were the you know challenges that oh, challenges and everything that happened during that time so that time i realized that somewhere everyone has to understand their own uh, learning the family the teacher and the child the student these three people have to come in a partnership and then they need to understand this thing that how you are going to mark what exactly this child knows and how i have to take his or her journey ahead at that time this thought just clicked my mind and i thought that this thing should have been happened before covid also that every student is learning on their own pace and they are getting their own time but during covid when i, I saw that what kind of situation a student were in so that time i just thought that this is the best thing that can happen in this situation that i as a educator knows what exactly my child knows and based on that i am teaching so now when schools are taking admissions post covid so what i personally believe is, so i think that now post covid when schools are taking admissions they should be considering this thing that understanding that the child uh you know when you conduct an exam before taking the child into the school you conduct an exam so the exam should not be taking place on one single level where you are just checking whether this child is good enough to be admitted in your school's grade 5 rather than you should be considering this child is a part of post covid world where in last two years whatever has happened with this child we do not know exactly so let's understand the reality we need to help this child in a man- manner being an educator so that they can overcome the lost learning of last two years also so the admission test or the uh, student intake test should be conducted in a manner where you know 
exactly see you can tell the parents also this is your child state this is what we provide being a school and this sh- sort of help you have to provide the child at home with extra remedial okay. classes and everything so that rather than blaming each other what happened in last two years uh, let's to blame online classes or to blame the last school or the previous school the idea should be to understand where the child is lacking and then providing the remedial classes rather than uh, shifting the blame from one party to the another so that should not be the case anymore and even if you are going to be an educator soon or you are going to enter the world so always keep this thing in mind to keep your uh, motivation and your confidence going never think that covid just took away your confidence from you or just uh, shaken you up as an individual but always keep this thought in mind which i um, thought of in 2021 and when i met the students offline that this is very important for every individual to understand what my scale of learning is i am standing on 6 and i want to reach 9 so this should be my strategy jitna jaldi aap is cheez ko understand kar lete hain ki i have to just mark my individual progress so it becomes really very easy for you to achieve your milestones the milestones which were impacted because of covid even education industry has to reshape itself so that whatever has happened during two years of covid keeping those thing in mind we can create our strategies in a way that is helping us in a manner where we know what exactly we are supposed to give to the people who are in front of us even after covid in schools students are learning in the same manner nothing has changed everything is completely same so when post covid everything is same so isn't it unfair at the part of the teachers as well as on the part of the students that they are not being exposed to the right amount of environment or the right way of environment so this is my personal opinion on this um so how to get back to your confidence how to take care of your physical and mental health how to adjust with the changing education industry these three things i have talked upon as of now so now it's your turn if you have questions for me please go ahead there are two comments i'll just read it quickly and then we are good to go for it today because at the end of the day i as an individual is the contributor to the education industry you as an individual is the contributor to the education industry so the things that we felt are lacking first we have to take art skill we have to reach the point where we wish to reach uh, as an individual and then we have to think what we can contribute to the society or to the education industry and then only we can see that edu- education industry is changing for better because it is difficult to for industrialists who are running the education industry to create changes post covid because the number of students we have in india or let's say globally is very high to change something abruptly and then marking or checking whether that thing is going in the right direction or not because that way we will be in between neither we will go on that side with the new uh, new um, methodologies or nor we will be able to settle down with the old ones so it's on us as an individual how we wish to see our education industry changing so i'll just put rest to my thoughts over here and i'll just go through the comments and now this uh, platform is all open to you guys and you can start asking your question unfortunately despite best efforts to set up our supportive remote learning experience evidence is emerging to show that school closures have resulted in actual learning losses absolutely because again the way i have pointed it out uh, not everyone is comfortable to switch uh, on uh, their mic or switch on their camera to become interactive and school is that space and that social circle of any student who just uh, saves them from any sort of family um, issues that they can leave behind come meet their social circle and make the education or their learning happen but what has happened during covid where the losses have happened so now the education the educationist or the people who are uh, who consider themselves to be the educators if they want the student to learn and get the best of, of what has happened so they have to take the complete uh, call of this particular thing 
I myself is an educator. I work as a school counselor as well as I'm a teaching profession also. Uh, so I personally take care of this thing. That I always tell this thing to every teacher. I imply this thing on myself also. That whenever you wish to see what my child needs post COVID, I compare my child's uh, progress report before COVID. In March 2020, COVID happened. My child was in. Uh, my child gave uh, nine, tenth grade exams at that time. I I should not be taking the example of tenth grade because in that year, uh, sorry, in twenty twenty one, yeah, in twenty twenty one, exams got cancelled. So I can take this example. So let's assume in twenty twenty, my child gave uh, board tenth uh, grade exams, and now I have my child's report card in front of me. I have my child's. Every school has this particular thing with them: the uh, UT papers, unit test paper, or and the cycle paper we call them, and then. Uh, Essay one, essay two, term wise exam sheets is always there in school. Uh, so you just go through the report card, and if you think there has been a drastic change between two report cards of twenty twenty uh, in March twenty twenty is report card and the report card of March twenty twenty two, there's a drastic change, and you want to have a closer look on your child. So just ask your examination cell to take out the answer sheets, compare. What happened with the child? Have they lost interest? That they were not interested in writing the answer. They left the answers blank, or <clears throat> they just thought uh, that they do not know the answer, or they wrote everything, but they were they were writing the answers out of the context. And what has been the issue? So when you compare these two sheets of twenty twenty and twenty twenty two, you understand where your child stands, and accordingly, you counsel your child, you counsel the family. Counseling doesn't come from a counseling psychologist only. Every educator has to keep um, a warm in themselves uh, to be a counselor to the child and to the uh, parents. That how we can just try to reshape our child in a manner where we can bring in the progress. So when in April twenty twenty two students started coming offline, so I told every parent to take UT one very very seriously, which happens in the month of May. I told them take uh, these uh, UT very very seriously because after May twenty twenty two UT one summer breaks will approach, and if you believe your child has drastically fallen down on the performance scale in UT one, then I will tell you the strategy. The teachers will share the strategies with you that how you are going to utilize the summer break to start building up the child's interest back. to make the child feel comfortable with the offline learning again to help them overcome the challenges that they faced in the online learning and whatever has happened ut1 would be a reflection board that where my child stands and accordingly we will make progress uh, progress uh, scale for every child that how they are going to make progress during the um, summer break we have around 30 to 40 days in our hand and if we try to build a habit in our child so we would be smartly able to do something so for this summer break let's decrease uh, the amount of holidays homework that we are giving to the child and increase uh, the um, uh, increase uh, the support toward the child where we can improvise uh, them on the uh, places where they are lacking certain things so this is how i made things work out from my school this is how i uh, this is the thing that i taught to parents who come to me for counseling so this way whenever you are stuck in with such kind of issues like um, education industry is stuck in now and other issues so you have to look for the solutions the time has gone we cannot uh, bring that time back we cannot put in the uh, additional support in those two years but now how do we move, how do i want to go ahead from here that planning is important if i plan smartly i'll get results so when child are come, when the children are coming back <clears throat> after summer break so again we have a ut2 in schools so in every school it takes place so now that will be again a progress marking report for me i'll compare ut1 and ut2 where my child stands and then accordingly i'll have a word with my parents that this is what you are supposed to do now so that in term 1 we can again mark the process so this is how you slowly and gradually make progress with the child rather than blaming anyone system school children teachers parents rather than blaming everyone we are looking up to the problem and then we are figuring out the solutions so that's my style of dealing with the thing 
so thank you ma'am for sharing your great ideas and information in front of us and thank you so much for making this session a big success the webinar was really very amazing i would like to give a proposal to vote of thanks to ma'am for gracing this webinar your presence and voice for help to magnify our cause in the best possible ways i hope all the participants learn a lot thank you so much lokesh thank you so much everyone for taking out time for me and coming to this webinar i'm still open for further suggestions or further feedbacks from your end and stay in touch let's learn together and now i'll take your leave and see you soon bye